Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Albert De La Cruz, and I work for the Department of Environmental Services, and I'm the Environmental and Wastewater Manager for the City Parish, and we are under the Environmental Division. And I have with me my supervisor, Ms. Sarah Boudreau, and she is our Environmental Coordinator. I'm Sarah Boudreau, I'm the Environmental Coordinator. We're going to do a fall demonstration for you. It's part of the uh, lesson packet that you can find on our website. Um, it has a bunch of lessons in there, and we're going to demonstrate the fall lesson. Right. And then uh, before we start, I would like to introduce uh, what we should do safety first, actually. So, what we could do, so I'm giving you, we need uh, safety, safety glasses. And then I might need to wear my lap gown as well because I'll be dealing with the grease. We have a lot of grease and oil here. We have actual oils. Right for this experiment, we'll be using lard. So first thing, the materials that we need, you need a, a liter of pickle. And then a hot plate. And then a aluminum pan. And then we need an ice for that one as well. So and then we have our own like that. this is a demonstration of a water pipe we're going to show you clean water flowing flowing through it and then what happens when fat soils and grease get clogged in the pipe and how water gets destructive and can't flow through the pipe okay and then we also need some uh, gloves since we'll be dealing with the hot glasses over here and if you don't have the heat resistance gloves we always have this one at our office, we have this can that this is a, a pot holder. And if you are all interested, you can always come by at our office at Chippewa Street. And we always give it away during the school outreach program or any outreach program that we attend to. So if you don't have these specialty gloves. And another gloves that we have to use since we'll be dealing with the grease. And we don't want to do it bare hand. We have the plastic gloves. And we Sarah and I were going to start with the plastic gloves so we could put it. Okay, on the procedure, now we're going through the procedure. First, we're going to put the grease for these experiments. We're going to use a lard. And it, from that procedure, it calls for two cups. So we're going to put the Lard here. And while, my, while Ms. Sarah is doing that, I'll try to go ahead and set up the hot plate. And it should be only on the minimum and then low heat. You don't want to burn it, burn your hand or anything. You should strictly follow what your teacher was trying to tell you so you won't get harmed or anything or get burned. See how nasty is it? <laughs> That's why we have to use a glove. So you, you have to use a glove. So that's that one. On, on the other hand, I already set up another hot plate. And you can see from the screen, we have two different beakers, right? And two different hot plates. So this other hot plate has already been heating for several minutes. It may probably take you 10 to 15 minutes from this stage, a solid. It's like a solid, buttery, fat grease. And then as it heats up, it changes the composition. It's like, it's another fun, uh, not, not fun fact really, but it's another uh, interesting lesson for the teachers that you could also teach the student the transformation from basically viscosity. So as that you could do a viscosity experiment at a certain temperature, record the temperature, and then see how it transforms from this stage to the semi-liquid stage. So what Ms. Sarah will do while we're heating, and we're still trying to heat it a little bit, Ms. Sarah will, will, she will show you how, the, how a working pipe unclogged, how it works. So we also have a back bucket over there so that the water, whatever, the wastewater will flow directly to the bucket. See, as you can see, the water is free flowing, unobstructed, and that's how it's supposed to be. 
basically I, as a simple analogy or a simple logic, think of it this way, that all the sewer pipes in a municipality, think of it this way, just like they can be uh, similarly comparatively as uh, analyzed as some of the veins and arteries in our body. So if the veins and arteries in our body are clogged, then we may get sick, especially we may get stroke or heart attack or whatever. It's the same thing with the sewer pipe within the city. So if the pipes were clogged, what will happen, Ms. Sarah? Uh, pipes will become obstructed and it'll cause backups. It can back up into your home. It can back up into the street. Um, and it's very unsanitary. And I, uh, that's what we call the SSO. Sanitary sewer overflows. And then we have an SSO program in Baton Rouge that tries to prevent, tries to prevent sanitary sewer overflows. They do a lot of grease treatment, root treatment, all kinds of different methods of cleaning out the pipes, but the most common factor is grease, and it's coming from mostly residential homes. The restaurants are required to get their grease traps cleaned every 90 days or more, so a lot of the grease problems are from apartments and residential homes, so we encourage you not to put your grease down the drain. We have outreach materials that you can request on our website to help you with this process. One is a can of grease lid, and when you're finished cooking, you can pour your grease in the can, cap it and the lid fits all three or four different size cans then you can cool it you can put it in the refrigerator or put it on ice and once it solidifies you can throw it away we also have scrub brushes for you to clean your pots with and they're free you can request it on our website and the pot holders and we have sink strainers so you can get the solids and prevent them from going down your sink Again, all these materials can be requested on our website, and we also attend events and hand them out. So, well, I think this speaker over here is about ready. So, what I'm going to do, I have to put it the next procedure it calls for this speaker. So, again, use the heat resistant uh, gloves because it will be very hot. So, while it is hot, we put it over here on the ice pack. From the procedure, it calls that from its uh, fully liquid stage after heating it on the hot plate, let it cool down for a little bit and the consistency to a consistency that is almost a little bit cloudy. So we'll just put there a couple of minutes and then what we're gonna do, maybe we start to introduce you another fun fact trivia over here or not. We have some simulated experiments as well. These are some more items that you should never put down your uh, drain, whether it be your toilet or your sink. These are scrubbing bubbles, uh, flushable wipes. They're uh, to use to scrub your toilet bowl and they're advertised as flushable. But as you can see, this has been in here for five years and it has not broken down. You can still see the flushable wipe in the middle of it. This is um, a sanitary wipe. Um, that, he, that are also advertised as flushable, something similar to this. They're advertised as flushable wipes. But as you can see, it has also been in here for five years and it does not start to break down at all. So you'll see the whole wipe in there. Right. And I have to add something, something on that flushable wipes. So I, I, we brought an example of flushable wipes, but if you really read behind it, you know, you could flip it a little bit over here in the back. Actually, it says it's not flushable. I don't read it all of you. So if it only all of you would pay attention at home, or maybe you could tell your mom and dad that go read the instructions in the back. It actually says disposal, disposal instruction. Flushing is okay if, see, there's a big if over there. I couldn't even read it. If permitted by if local rules, by local rule. one wipe per flush, no history of clogs or backups, septics follows EPA schedule for alternative systems, annual pumping and inspection. Right. So basically it tells you, they did not tell directly that it is flushable. It tells you to consult to your local ordinance or local regulators or something. And like then, yeah, that. it has a little star by the flushable on the front, but you have to look really the tiny print. Right, so a tiny, tiny print, which we were trying to tell 
the people doing outreach program, there is actually written the instruction in the back. Okay, so that's and another. If you do flush these, it might not make it all the way down to our sanitary sewer system and cause problems for us and might cause backups in your home from flushing, get stuck in your pipe. So we don't recommend it. And then this is toilet paper. And toilet paper, as you can see, broke down. It can easily pass through the pipes and go make it to the treatment system. And unlike the rest of the stuff, this is grease. And this has been in here for five years and it's a big grease ball now before it was liquid, but it's become a solid. You could throw it away now. Don't recommend it ever putting it down your pipes. Right, okay. So we're gonna go back to our experiment again. That's additional information for y'all. So now I think this one is ready. Miss Sarah will try to pour it a little bit and show how it goes if it flows to the to our pipe. So since it's a, a, since it is at its liquid state, it will free flow, flow. It will be free flowing into the pipe, so there would be no problem. However, as it cools down. I will show you again later, as it cools down, it will turn to a solid state. So, see look, it's flowing, but the problem is when, when the pipe cools down, so as it, as it travels further away, along the sewer lines, it will start to solidify. So, since we don't have that much time, we will do a simulation, and Sarah will put the uh, uh, grease, you can use this one, and she would uh, intentionally block the pipe inside the pipe. So you will see as it Now, just like what I said before, it would be like your veins will be clogged with cholesterol and the blood will be free flowing. It would be the same thing with this, this pipe with water. Now, see how it looks like. So the water is standing, it's not even free flowing to our waste bucket anymore. So if that happens, so if that happens, then that would cause a sewer back up in your house. And not only that, on a bigger scale, it would cause a sanitary, sanitary sewer overflow on our manholes, right? So if that happens, that's a violation of environmental laws and regulations like LDQ or NEPA because these are sanit uh, root, uh, raw sewer coming out of the pipe untreated. So that's what we were trying to educate everyone else, what not to put in your drain or pipe or whatever. And then so on top of that, since this is grease, it could also act as a, like a, a paste. So any solid materials that you put into your drain, it will stick over there and then the clock will be good, bigger and bigger and bigger and that will be another cause of the problem. So that's why we also have one kilo oil over here. Not kilo oil, promotional item. Explain that. This is a sink strainer. You put this one off your sink, it'll catch the solids, and then you can just throw them away in the garbage versus let them go down your pipe. So we also have that promotional item in our division. So if you are all interested, you can all come and visit us in our office at Chippewa. So now, so what's the, so now you see it, the actual demonstration of how, how uh, grease clogs our sewer pipes. And so now that, the, that, you, that it's a big problem and it's a big, it costs a lot of money and, and time consuming because uh, our engineers and our technicians will go over and then clean the pipes and it's, it's not cheap, of the, cheap at all. So if we were, if we all will be collectively doing our own part, just like how we showed you, if we are not doing or discharging any grease or pipe in, um, grease into our pipe in, or into our drainage, 
then we will prevent this type of problem. So, so what's the solution? Just like what Ms. Sarah said a while ago. So just collect all your uh, debris that you use in your house and then uh, put it on a bucket or something like that. Just, this is just for a demonstration. So you put it in a big container and then put it in a nice bag. And then Ms. Sarah showed you a while ago on how to do it. And then this is what she did. Just pour the grease in here, cap it, and then cool it. You can stick it in the freezer, stick it in your refrigerator, an ice bath. And then when it's solidified, you're going to remove the cap and just throw it away. Throw it away. And then uh, what else should we add? We also have this. The fight fog brochure, and it has all the steps for painting the grease on the back. And just some facts about the sewer system and what you should and shouldn't put down your drain. Hold on. Okay, that's that's the main conclusion to this one is that uh so let me go back to the lesson plan. So the conclusion is that fast oil and grease released into the city's sewer system can cause major problems, which we actually demonstrated and showed you how it works. And then uh, from here, educating the public is essential to making community aware of the potential hazards of the path, the fog. We call it fog, F-O-G, fog, stands for fast oil and grease. For additional uh, information, actually, Fog, uh, there's still a debate out there because they couldn't identify what's the chemical composition of fog. But mostly majority of the articles in the research area, they were saying that it was primarily composed of uh, saturated uh, fatty acid and glycerol. So that would be additional study or, or additional experiment for your class. Uh, I was just talking directly to the teachers so you could you could teach your student uh, the difference between fatty acids because fatty acids can also be composed of uh, uh, saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. And they, uh, they were saying from the literature that the fast oil and grease are com mostly comprised of the saturated fatty acid, which in further literature, uh, I probably you would all know that saturated fatty acid is not even, it's not really good for your health. That's why the saturated fatty acid and the trans fat. But so that's how it works. And some literature is further additional information on how they say that the uh, fog sticks to the, or forms inside the pipe is due to the reaction they call, maybe it's additional information for the teacher again, they call it the saponification process. So it's a re reaction of the fatty acid and some minerals like calcium in the pipe, and it creates saponification. The term soap it creates a soap light because they were trying to tell that the fog is actually a soap light compound sticking into the pipe. So other than that, we have showed you how the fog creates problem in our pipe and. We're happy to entertain any additional questions. Feel free to reach us through our school outreach, through our school outreach chairman, Mr. Michael Lowe, and then he will relay us the information and we'll be glad to help you and entertain your questions. Have a great day.